Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech. And as you can see from the title below, we are gonna be installing Windows 10 on our Raspberry Pi. And not, not the IoT version, but the Windows on ARM. So let's get started. So before we begin, I gotta give credit to all the people who were involved in this project. Well, at least to the ones that popped up in my head. Now I actually created a full story behind this, but the video got too long. So this is actually the second time I'm recording this. But if you do wanna hear the history of Windows 10 on ARM, uh, let me know in the comments below and I could probably make that video or just upload what I had said before. Uh, one of the main contributors who started this whole mess in the beginning was NT Authority when he first tweeted the photo on February of 2018 of Windows 10 running on a Raspberry Pi. Since then we've been thriving to get this install to Windows 10 working as you could say as streamlined as possible. Now all thanks to Andre, Andrew, Andre, that's, I don't know how to pronounce his name, but uh, due to his UEFI build uh, initially for just, you know, installing like different types of Ubuntu or Debian or Linux partitions, he was able to modify his code and incorporate Windows 10 into his boot method. Uh, then we have THCHI, which helped tremendously, I don't know how to say his name, Thachi, which helped tremendously on the AB testing of getting the installation method more concrete uh, Dave B who started the thread and also created his video on installing Windows 10. Uh, Fullcore, um, I think that's how he says his name. He did a lot of A-B testing as well. Driver1998 uh, was a huge part in creating drivers for the Raspberry Pi on Windows on ARM. Uh, Googlenator, uh, man, he, he basically did a game changer on the SD card method, on the installation method. Ash Bash, the initial creator of the first installation method of Windows 10, like he made an app that actually was a, almost a one-click method to install Windows 10 on Raspberry Pi. Now Mario, which his app is the app that we're gonna be using today to install Windows 10 onto our Raspberry Pi. Now I apologize if I mispronounce your name or if I missed the name or two. Like I said, there was a lot of people involved and those were the names that stuck out to me. So let's get started with the install method. All right, so the first thing we need to do is head over to this website called wrproject.ml. Again, I'll leave all the links in the description so you know what we're talking about. And scroll down a little bit, and the first thing you need to download is this little zip archive. So this file is where all the drivers are sent. He just placed them all in a zip file with all the drivers inside. Once you're done downloading that, which I already have, you see the WA drivers, head over to the download site or download page and download this version, which is 0.21. That's the version I'm using. I don't know where it's up to by now, but that's the version I'm using. And I already downloaded it over here. Now we need to head over to the GitHub page, Andre's web, uh, GitHub page, and clone or download his entire repository over here. And it will actually have the binaries of the uh, BIOS that we need to use. So once you're done with that, like you can see, I, I have everything all sorted out. We're ready to start the app called WREXE. Okay, so here you can actually select multiple languages. Hit next, select the SD card, which I'm gonna choose my 16 gigabyte SD card. Hit next, and here you select the ARM image. Now we don't have one yet, but you actually have to get to this website called uup.rgadg. You have to go to this website itself. And here, and here you can actually select what you need to download. So we're gonna be using the insider version, uh, preview 17, where is it? The RS4, which is 17134.1. So we're going to choose the ARM, select the language, which is going to be whatever your language. I'm going to be using United States. Uh, all editions. You could actually just make it small, so you could use home if you want, and whatever you want to download as, but you're ultimately going to need the ISO. So you could do the one click command or one click command, uh, this file, run downloaded command file, which I did. Uh, that's why my folders look so weird. If you go into the arm, it has like all these files. You run this little run.command and it'll actually generate an ISO file for you. So um, that's all you really need to do as far as that. Since I downloaded it already, I'm, I'm just gonna show you that it's ready. So going back to the app, I'm gonna select the ISO image that I have which is right here, ARM, and then the ISO 134. Now I tried a newer version, and the newer version does work, but I'm on the more stable version, which is 17134. Hit open and give it 
I don't know, two minutes to let it mount and grab whatever files it needs from this. And it's going to say, OK, ready. All right, there we have it. It detected what version it's using and the image is good. So we're going to hit next, select the drivers. This is where we downloaded it initially from the website. Uh, I'm going to head over to, where did I go? Here, and there's a zip file. I'm going to open that. It's going to check it. Drivers are OK. Hit next. UEFI firmware. We downloaded that from the GitHub, which we go over here to binaries, pre-built, the latest version, which you always want to use, release. And you could use debug or release, but debug actually has more garble in there. Not garble, but debugging stuff. So hit release and then RPI EFI.fd. Hit open. Then hit next. Configurations. Here's the only thing that you could kind of change. Now I'm using the MBR. Uh, you could use GPT or MBR, but MBR is easier for us to update the uh, UFI boot, the, the FD file if we needed to, because we could actually see the partition when we stick it into the Windows computer. If you use GPT, you can't really change the file. It gets annoying. Uh, installation media. Now, there's two ways. DISM is what comes with Microsoft, so you could use the DISM method. Uh, WIMLib is a third-party that will do what DISM does, but faster. So I would use WIMLib. Win, win lib. And that's it. Uh, you, if you want to save configurations, you could save the configuration for the next time and then hit next. It's going to tell you that it's going to destroy the device. Hit install. Now, this is going to format the device to whatever it needs to do, which is making that super boot partition, uh, the master boot record, the first partition for the boot record, and then NTFS partition for the files. Um, after that, it's going to actually stick on 30% for quite some time, probably about an hour. But if you use DISM, it's actually going to take about like two hours. So yeah, this method is faster. So it's going to stay around 10, 30% for a while. And then it's going to jump over to 70, then 80%, then to 100%. So I'm just going to skip to the part where it's already done. All right, so since this is the first time you're actually booting into the Raspberry Pi, we do have to configure the BIOS really quick. I'm going to hit escape a couple of times to get to the menu. Scroll down to device manager, Raspberry Pi configurations, uh, hype DXE configurations, and change this over to EL1. And then for our system and frequencies, change it to max. If else, or it's going to stay at 600 megahertz since there's no like controller. Now we're going to boot into our Windows 10 for the first time. And you got to unplug your keyboard. Now this will actually take a while for it to boot up. It's going to take like a good 10 minutes because it's doing the first initial system setups and stuff like that. So after that, it's actually going to blue screen for the first time, which is fine. It's going to automatically reboot itself. And then the next time when it boots up, it's going to go right into the Windows setup menu where you could configure your name and you know locales and all that other stuff so you could just go through that menu once you're done it's gonna boot right into your windows and you could do whatever you want with it now keep in mind that this windows still don't have drivers for ethernet doesn't have drivers for bluetooth it doesn't have drivers for any connectivity for the internet so it kind of makes this in our day and age more useless than not because we can't do anything you know through the internet but Again, a lot of developments been going on with this and every other day or every other week, something's changing, something's improving, new drivers are being added and stuff. Just, just so you remember, if you keep an eye on that thread that I'm leaving a link to, there might be drivers by the time we're talking about this or I don't know, check it out. All right, so for me, it took about two and a half minutes to boot. I'm using a 32 gigabyte class 10 card, I believe. And... One of the more impressive features on Windows on ARM is WOW, which is Windows on Windows. Yeah, I know it's getting confusing. But it allows us to run x86 32-bit code on our Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to demonstrate an application that I installed earlier, which is Microsoft Word. Yeah, 2016. It has 32-bit version. You just stick in the install media and it just installs right away. It does take a little bit of time to boot up, but ultimately in the end, it does work and works pretty well. So as you can see, it started up like a charm. It's just putting in the features. I can open up a blank document. And 
there we have it. Having to run x86 code works perfectly fine. Here's uh, the property, system property, the task manager. So I can show you guys how it looks like on the inside, which now judging by the performance, you could see it's running a BCM2837 and four cores, pretty cool. Now this is on a Raspberry Pi 3, uh, not a B plus, which this does work on a B plus as well. I just didn't put it on a B plus right now. You also gotta keep in mind that, again, the USB drivers are very buggy. And as of right now, my mouse doesn't work anymore because it just crapped out. So in order to fix that, you would have to unplug the USB and plug it into somewhere else. So as far as the Windows 10, what kind of functionality it does have other than the Wi-Fi not being working and all that stuff, uh, you could get the GPIO working and also the SPI and the I2C, it is all functioning on this guy. Audio is working. The video drivers are working in a sense, so it displays this, but I don't know if it's gonna be able to do like full gaming mode type thing. But yeah, you're gonna have to try it out for yourself to see how far you could take it. And again, keep checking the forums just to see if there's updated drivers to get the Wi-Fi working because that's the only thing I'm really waiting for. Once Wi-Fi works on this thing, oh man, this is completely gonna change the dynamics of the Raspberry Pi. Yes, I know it's made for Linux. I know Windows is, you know, you're gonna bash on it, but you know what? It's what we do. We, we hack things together and make it work. So guys, if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you guys have any questions about this, hit up in the comments below or check out my Discord. It's quicker for me to respond over there, as well as check out the thread. Uh, it probably has a lot of answers to your questions on that thread already. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say my Nerd Cave, hack till it hurts.